Good morning, everybody. We're going to get ready to get started on the Shad and River Herring board meeting. I want to say for the record that I'm terrified to chair this meeting after yesterday's parliamentary training. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. We've got a pretty um, quick agenda. We do have four action items, so please be ready for that. My name, uh, if you do, don't know who I am, my name is Lynn Fagley. I represent the state of Maryland and I'm happy to serve as your chair today. I've got uh, James Boyle and Katie Giroux up here with me and we're also going to hear from Brian Nealon, who I want to flag. This is his last meeting as our TC chair. So I want to thank um, Brian for all the great work that he's done for these two important species. Uh, so with that, uh, the first order of business is approval of the agenda. Are there any modifications, additions, or changes to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll consider that approved by consent. Next, we're moving to the proceedings from November 2022. Does anybody have any changes, additions, modifications to the proceedings? Okay, seeing none, we will consider those approved by consent. Next, we move to public comment. I do have, is Mr. Mike Nardalili in the audience? And I apologize if I massacred your name, but welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Mike Norloy, I'm the Executive Director of the Interstate Commission on the Potomac River Basin, or ICPRB. Uh, in 1940, Congress approved a compact between all the basin states of the Potomac watershed, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and the District of Columbia. Uh, and I'm here to just introduce myself and my commission. Uh, some of you may remember that uh, we were very involved with the return of the Shad to the Potomac River. Uh, this was an uh, operation done by our aquatic biologists uh, in the 1990s. Uh, Jim Cummins may be a name familiar to some of you. Uh, and so I'm just here to, to learn about how the Shad are doing and look forward to any further interactions with uh, your commission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, for being here. Okay, so next we will move on to consideration of the North Carolina American Shad Sustainable Fishery Managed Plan. This is an update. This will require a final action. So I'll be looking for a motion at the end of the presentation by Brian Nealon. So um, Brian, if you're online, take it away, please. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me all right? We got gotcha. you. All righty. So thank you for those kind, kind words, Madam Chair, and good morning to the board. Uh, my name is Brian Neal, and I'm the current TC Chair. Um, not for long, as Madam Chair just told you guys, and I'm also the TC Rep from New Jersey. Today I have a quick overview of an updated sustainable fishery management plan from North Carolina for your consideration. So we can fall right into it. We can go to the next slide. So I'd like to include some quick background info so board members have some frame of reference for uh, reviewing the plan presentations. Um, amendment two and three of the Shad and River Herring FMP requires states requesting a fishery to uh, submit a sustainable fishery management plan. The fishery management plan defines uh, sustainable as uh, demonstrating the stock to support a commercial and or recreational fishery that will not diminish the future future stock uh, reproduction and recruitment. And these plans are updated every five years to reassess stock status and sustainability. Next slide. So last month, the TC reviewed an update for Shad from North Carolina. Um, if approved, this plan would be in place from 2023 through 2027. Um, after reviewing the updates and changes to the plan, uh, the TC recommended the approval of the SFMP as presented. Next slide. So North Carolina does not qualify for de minimis status, so it made a request for both commercial and recreational fisheries. Uh, they do quite a bit of work in a, um, a few of their river systems throughout the state, and uh, they use the data 
uh, both fishery dependent and independent from those rivers to support um, their fishery management plan. Next slide. So the most recent stock assessment of American shad in North Carolina determined that populations in the Albemarle Sound are sustainable and not overfished, whereas the determination of stack status could not definitely be assigned for the Tar Pamlico, the Noose, and Cape Fear rivers um, due to uh, limited information uh, from the 2020 benchmark stock assessment. Uh, while stock status for the Noose and Cape Fear river systems uh, could not be determined, the SAS noted that adult mortality for the Noose was considered sustainable and there is an increasing trend in adult abundance in the Cape Fear River since 2005. So this plan uh, was an update, so the general framework of the plan remains relatively the same uh, with some changes to a few of the sustainability parameters to better reflect the data currently being collected and how that data is analyzed and applied uh, to develop the various parameters. So uh, this slide here just kind of summarizes some of the changes um, in this plan update to uh, North Carolina's sustainability parameters. So an Avomarl Sound Index of Juvenile Abundance was added uh, after uh, was developed through the 2020 benchmark stock assessment. And it's been incorporated to the plan as a new sustainability parameter um, to catch per unit network. Additionally, uh, sink nets were removed from their independent gill net survey. Uh, these nets were removed to reduce interactions with sturgeon. Um, the removal of the sink gill nets from the data uh, did not significantly impact the relative abundance estimates of shad uh, because most of their shad are getting the net surveys getting caught in their floating nets. And finally, for the Albemarle Sound, uh, relative F is now calculated using the female CPUE index as a same sustainability parameter and commercial harvest of rows is now coming from all gear types. So that's how they're uh, generating their, their relative F. And these modifications were necessary to capture uh, changes in the commercial fishery due to management restrictions, as well as changes in sampling methodology in their uh, independent gillnet survey and the modifications for the relative F calculation are now more representative of American shad abundance from fishery independent and fishery dependent data. For the tar pamlico and noose, uh, the relative F now incorporates recreational harvest into the calculation. Uh, this was due to a significant decrease in commercial harvest over uh, the past uh, tenure of the previous plan. Uh, the rec data will help round out the declining data typically available um, from the commercial fishery in the past. And for the Cape Fear River, the plan now incorporates recreational harvest data as well. Um, for the same reason, declining commercial harvest, as well as the electrofishing uh, CPUE that they also use, uh, was, was adjusted due to some fish passage issues at one of the survey sites that um, could have been artificially inflating abundance estimates. Next slide. So here's a slide of the summary of changes um, that are the commercial and recreational uh, harvest uh, restrictions. Uh, for all the wa waterways highlighted here, commercial season dates have been changed from fixed season dates to potential time frames in which the fishery can occur. Uh, the dates listed on this slide should be considered the maximum potential duration of the fishery in a given year. Uh, the actual dates of each fisheries of uh, each year's fishery will be determined by North Carolina. Carolina's um, shad working group uh, taking into account the previous season's fisheries harvest, um, independent data, uh, whether or not sustainability parameters have been exceeded, input from stakeholders and other applicable parameters. Um, for the Abramarl Sound Roanoke River, uh, the potential time frame for the commercial fishery was expanded from the previous plan. Uh, it's now January 1st, uh, potentially January 1st through April 14th. Um, the expansion of the potential season for this part of the state uh, only was due to the uh, Abramarl Roanoke complex being assessed as not overfished and overfishing not occurring. The rest of the rivers and inland waters retained uh, the previous plan set dates. Um, with, as I mentioned before, these are no longer set dates. They're uh, now potential timeframes for the fishery to be executed. 
And for the commercial fishery, the statewide bag, bag limit was changed from a 10 fish aggregate uh, to a 10 fish shad aggregate with only uh, one of those fish uh, permitted to be an American shad. So they, that's a potential reduction in American shad harvest there. And next slide. That was the, the general summary of, of uh, North Carolina's updated plans with the changes to the, um, how the sustainability parameters are calculated as well as um, changes to commercial and recreational regulations coming up. So I could take any questions um, if anybody has any. Great, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Are there any questions for Brian on this? Anybody online, Tony? Okay. Malcolm Rhodes. If you're ready for a motion, Madam Chairman, um, I'd move to approve the updated American Shad Sustainable Fishery Plan from North Carolina as presented today. Is there a second? Russell dies. Okay, we have a motion on the board, and that is move to approve the updated Shad Sustainable Fishery Management Plan from North Carolina as presented today. Motion by Dr. Rhodes, second by Russell Dives, and I now give the motion to the body to discuss. Are there any discussion on the motion? Okay, well, is there any objection to the motion? Is there any discussion on the motion? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, seeing none, is there any objection to this motion? Okay, we'll consider this one approved by consent. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. The next uh, item is an update on the 2023 River Herring Benchmark Stock Assessment. Dr. Drew, take it away. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, uh, work continues on the 2023 stock assessment for river herring. We, uh, the index and life history work groups of the SAS have been hard at work standardizing and evaluating the indices as well as developing life history parameters, including growth, maturity, natural mortality, and total mortality. Um, we'll be having our methods workshop the week after next to uh, finalize those data decisions and move on to developing methods for or, um, reference points and potential stock status options, um, as well as dealing with uh, the bycatch question and maybe some potential modeling population approaches for that. The goal is to have um, a final assessment workshop sometime in early summer and to do the peer review in late summer so that we can present to you at the uh, annual meeting this year. However, depending on how work progresses over this time, um, we may end up bumping that to the uh, February board meeting to give us ourselves a little more time this year. So complete it this year, but do the peer review at the end of the year. Um, I think after the, the methods workshop, we'll have a better sense of whether this year is a uh, completable timeline. So uh, that's where things are, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Katie. Questions? Are you online, Tony? Okay. All right. Well, we'll look forward to uh, to the results of those analyses. Okay. Moving on. We are going to now. Uh, uh, there was one question that there was a date for the methods workshop, Katie. Yes. So the methods workshop will be held via, via webinar. The date and the link are on the ASMFC calendar, but it's going to be February 13th and 14th and then 16th and 17th. So there will be sort of a break in the webinar on that Wednesday to give the SAS some work time. Um, and But it'll be the 13th and the 14th and the 16th and the 17th. And like I said, the dates and the link for that webinar are on the ASMFC calendar if you're interested. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, there's one question from Jeff Kalen. Or he put his hand down. I think we covered it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Okay. We're going to go to consider the fishery management plan review and state compliance for the 2021 fishing year. James Boyle, take it away. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Right, we'll jump right in. Next slide, please. Okay, here's an outline for the presentation. I'm going to start with a short reminder of historical landings over time and then move on to cover the 2021 fishing year specifically. Uh, and then I'll move on to some of the monitoring and the compliance reports, including fish passage, stocking efforts, and certain bycatch interactions. And finally, I'll end with the de minimis requests and the recommendations from the plan review team. Next slide, please. So for that quick reminder of the historical context, so this figure shows the trajectories of commercial landings for river herring in American shad since 1950. Starting in the 1970s, river herring landings fell drastically and then steadily decreased over time. For shad, there's also been a steady decrease in landings over time, which of course is in part due to the moratoria implemented through amendments two and three. Next slide, please. So to zoom in on the end of that time series, make it a little bit easier to see. Um, since 1990, there is more variation for river herring, but general, with landings increasing from 2016 to 2019. Um, but for shad, you generally see a downward trend in landing since the 90s. Next slide, please. So for 2021 specifically, uh, this table shows state landings and coastwide totals for commercial shad and river herring, excluding confidential data. For river herring, coastwide commercial landings included by, including bycatch totaled just over 2.1 million pounds, which is a 12% increase from 2020. Bycatch values continue to plummet by 99.7% from 2020, which is, uh, as a reminder, after a 77% drop from 2019 to 2020. Um, all, this, all of this is the result of lower bycatch reported from Massachusetts. I'll add another quick reminder that I reported at the last FMP review last year that Massachusetts eliminated their state port size sampling program, and so they report uh, no NEFOP data. And in that compliance report, the NEFOP data they reported was 9,259 pounds, uh, but I did not include that in this table because it's a combined estimate of both shad and river herring, uh, so it didn't really fit in the, in the table. Uh, and that's also across several fisheries and regions. Um, so for reference, that same reporting counted 142,639 pounds in 2020. For American Shad, the total 2021 commercial landings, directed and bycatch included, reported in the compliance reports were 195,642 pounds, which is a 39% decrease from 2020 landings. However, bycatch landings of Shad increased 96% and represent 17% of total landings. Hickory Shad commercial landings were amounted to 99,419 pounds, which is an 8% increase from 2020 although bycatch landings decreased by 89% and are 2% of the total landings. Next slide, please. As part of the requirements in Amendments 2 and 3 for river and shad, respectively, passage counts are required on select rivers in the states on the slide. 4.44 uh, million river herring were counted, which represents a 29% decrease compared to 2020. And 377,472 shad is a 47% decrease compared to 2020. There are a few caveats to note from the compliance reports. I'll give a couple of examples. For instance, the American Shad Survey at the Stephen Dam in South Carolina was cut short due to a, mechanic, a gate mechanical failure. Uh, and two locations on the Susquehanna River were not in operation to prevent invasive species, although they did perform trap and transport operations, which transported 6,413 American Shad upstream. Next slide, please. During 2021, half three rare American shad fry were stocked in the Pawcatucket, Nanticoke, Potomac, and the Santee Rivers, totaling 16.24 million American shad as a 10% increase from 2020. And Maine also continues to participate in trap and transfer stocking of adult pre-spawning alewife of wild origin on the Androscoggin River, although that's not included in the table in the document. Next slide, please. For sturgeon interactions in 2021, there were 40 reported with one fatality. However, uh, as always, New Jersey gill netters report the weight and not the number of individuals. So they reported 1,666 pounds. Of those 40 interactions, 33 were identified as Atlantic sturgeon, five as short nose, and two were unclassified. Um, again, as always, Rhode Island reports no NEFOP and FC monitoring data, which lags by a year because it comes out after the compliance report deadline. So they reported four interactions from 2020, and we will see the 20, 2021 interactions in this year's compliance report in July. Next slide, please. For the upcoming fishing year, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Florida have requested continued de minimis status for their American shad fisheries, and New Hampshire, Georgia, and Florida also request continued de minimis status for river herring. They all meet the requirements and qualify based on their commercial landings, which is less than 1% of the coastwide total. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so moving on to the PRT's recommendations. In evaluating the state compliance reports, the PRT noted a few inconsistencies with the requirements in Amendments 2 and 3. Similarly to 2020, some monitoring could not be completed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which is detailed in Table 6 of the document. Uh, additionally, there are a few long-standing issues that are related to funding or staffing shortages where states either cannot complete a survey or take samples but don't pro cannot process them, for example. Um, in previous years, we've included those only in Table 6, but the PRT just wanted to note them in the body of the document as a reminder, but they uh, do not, they've been long-standing for many years and do not represent, uh, the PRT doesn't feel any need to take any action on them. Another issue of note, it's in the document, the Edisto River was below CPUE sustainability benchmark for three consecutive years, but management action was not listed as triggered in the compliance report. However, since the drafting of the document, a uh, management measure has been implemented for the 2023 fishing year, and that measure will be evaluated by the TC in a future meeting. There are other small inconsistencies in the, with the compliance report template, such as not including a copy of the state fishing regulations or a section in Hickory Shad, which the PRT requests, even if that section just says not applicable for the ease of our review. Uh, with those minor issues and given the circumstances regarding the monitoring, the PRT recommended approval for the compliance reports for 2121 for all states. Uh, there is one further recommendation the PRT is making. The group noted some inconsistencies in bycatch reporting, with some states utilizing NEFOP reporting, some states using their own catch reporting, and some not specifying the sources for their data. So, therefore, in the compliance report template for this year, staff will add a section for states to detail the sources of their bycatch data. And the PRT is going to use that to better identify gaps in the reporting and use that for future reviews. Next slide, please. So with that information, the action for the board is to consider approval of the 2021 Shadden River Herring FMP review, the state compliance reports, and the minimum status for Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Georgia, and Florida. And next slide, please. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Great. Thank you, James. Are there any questions on the presentation? John Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for the presentation, James. Um, just curious, I noticed that the uh, shad landings continue to drop and the stocking, though, is going up. I know that the states all uh, use marking on the fry they're stocking. Is there any effort to uh, get all the results from the states that are stocking if they can uh, generate any type of estimate of the impact that the stocking is having? You know, to look at it in the catch. I know a lot of states are sampling the catch to look for the marking on their stock shed. I am not aware of any current effort, at least not in the FMP review process, but it's something I can look into and, and get back to you. And maybe something we can include. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Ross up. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just, just wanted to speak briefly to the to the missed CPU uh, targets for the for the Edisto in South Carolina. Those, uh, you know, we've seen a market decline in the number of shad fishermen in across the state, and particularly in the Edisto. And uh, you know, we feel like that that loss in effort from uh, from the fishermen contributed to that, as well as the the impact of the the social restrictions in in 20 and 21 from the from the pandemic. But measures like like was mentioned in the report, we do have some measures being implemented for 23 that should uh, should address that. Uh, even though we think that that's kind of an artifact of a lack of a lack of participation. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Russell dies. Uh, thank you. Um, I was wondering, I, a few years back, Connecticut was removed, um, we were at a meeting and they reported they had removed X amount of dams uh, on the rivers. I was wondering if that was showing any progress in the amount of Shadow River herring. Uh, Justin did. Yeah, thanks for the question, Russell. Um, I'm gonna have to say that I don't really know. Um, I mean, we've certainly got ongoing efforts within our state to do dam removals, fishway installations. That being said, I don't know right now off the top of my head sort of how many miles of river we've restored in recent years. Um, so I don't, I don't really have a good answer for you, but I can certainly uh, get some information for you and, and send it back to you. 
Oh, thank you. I, the reason I asked the question was, I don't see any chance for our Shad and River Herring in Maryland. Uh, this was when I was a young man that we had just boatload after boatload of herring caught and processed on Tillman. Um, but now we got so many invasive species with the snakehead and the uh, blue cat up around the Conowingo Dam that I I see no hope for them. But I was just wondering, you know, I would like to see success somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for the follow up. I guess one thing I should mention is that um, we, we were seeing some marginal success with alewives. You know, some of our runs seem to be recovering a little bit. Uh, blueback herring have been in tough shape all along and have not been doing any better. And then this last year in 2022, we had pretty much the worst year of river herring return, returns that we've had. You know, I mean, really, probably since we've really started, you know, counting them. Um, and that was a wasn't just a Connecticut thing, it was also Rhode Island and Southern Massachusetts as well. So uh, I would love to say that we've got, you know, some really good signs of success with river herring restoration. We felt like we were kind of getting somewhere maybe a little bit with alewives, and then this last year was really bad. So we're hoping it's a sort of a one-year speed bump and we'll get back to back to normal next year, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I appreciate the conversation. It, it's a it's a daunting problem, and between climate change and invasive species, and then the money that we're investing, it'd be nice to see some progress. Um, are there any other questions on the presentation? Anything online, Tony? Okay, so our next step would be to consider approval. Don Maniscalco. I'd be happy to make a motion. Move to approve the fishery management plan review, state compliance reports, and de minimis requests for Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Florida for American shad, and New Hampshire, Georgia, and Florida for river herring for the 2021 fishing year. Second by Erica Burgess. Okay, we have a motion on the board. Move to approve the fishery management plan review, state compliance reports, and de minimis, de minimis requests for Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts and Florida for American shad and New Hampshire, Georgia and Florida for river herring for the 2021 fishing year. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing no discussion, is there any objection to this motion? Okay, good job. Motion passes by consent. Okay, moving on. We are going to go to our next agenda item, which is to review and populate the advisory panel membership. Uh, Tina Berger. Is Tina, oh, Tina in the room? I'm here, give me one second, sorry about that. No worries, hi Tina. Sorry guys. I offer for your approval, uh, consideration and approval, two nominations to the Shadden River Herring Advisory Panel. Stephen Gebhard, a recreational angler and retire, retired Connecticut DEEP biologist with over four decades of experience with diatomous species. And William, William Lucy, who focuses on dam removal and fish passage issues with Save the Sound, also from Connecticut. Your nominations were provided in the supplemental materials. Thank you, Tina. Are there any questions or discussion on these nominations? Okay, it looks like there's a motion on the board. Dr. Davis, would you care to state your motion for the record? Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to approve Stephen Gephardt and William Lucy of Connecticut to the Shad and River Herring Advisory Panel. Okay, we have a second by Roy Miller. And the motion on the board is to approve Stefan Gephardt and William Lucy of Connecticut to the Shad and River Herring Advisory Panel. Is there any discussion on this motion? Is there any objection to the motion? Okay, seeing none, the motion passes by consent. Thank you very much. 
And the next is also going to be an action. We are going to move to, we're going to um, elect a vice chair. So I'll be looking for a motion um, to nominate some lucky person, Pat Kelleher. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to nominate Phil Edwards from Rhode Island. Sorry, Phil. <laughs> Second by Eric Reed. Okay. The motion on the board was to nominate Phil Edwards as vice chair of the Shatton River Management Board. Is there any discussion on this motion? Eric Reed. Yeah, I, mean, I missed the I missed the parliamentary procedure yesterday, but you know, I was really considering making a motion to amend the language to expound on Mr. Edwards' qualifications, or it's a substitute with a couple of blanks in it, or something like that. I don't really know what happened yesterday, but you can fill in the blanks. But you know, well, I could I could amend how you spell Mr. Kelleher's name, but that's fine, and my name as well. But <laughs> but I, you know, con congratulations and condolences, Mr. Edwards. But it's, he's an excellent choice, so thank you. Thank you very much. Anything? Any other discussion on the motion? Is there any objection to the motion? All right, this carries uh, carries by consent. Uh, congratulations, Phil. Um, thank you for stepping up to do that. All right, and this takes us to our last agenda item. This is other business. We do have an item here. I'm going to turn this one over to um, John Maniscalco um, to outline his uh, his um, his other business. So I'll make this quick. Um, so there's some really important genetic work, work being done on Shad and River herring species that uh, we hope will inform stock ID efforts and sources of bycatch mortality. Uh, USGS, among others, is heavily involved, and I'd ask that USGS update the TC on the status of current genetic sample collections, identifying data gaps and future needs. Um, the idea is to work together to achieve comprehensive sampling and identify where additional resources may be needed to accomplish that. So following um, that TC update, I'd ask that the board be updated next time we meet on collections thus far and on any recommendations that TC may have. And if necessary, I'm happy to make a motion. Thank you. Thank you, John. So I don't think we need a motion for this if the board consents that we can send this to the TC. So is there any discussion or thought about having the TC updated and getting more information on genetic sampling and bringing that update forward to the board. I think this is an excellent idea. Any, any comments, questions? Okay, with that, thank you, John. We'll, we'll move that forward for the record. Okay, awesome. All right, and so the final um, item is, is there any objection to a motion to adjourn made by the chair? Okay. See you then. We stand adjourned. Thank you.